It has been a year for toys. Lots of different ways of interacting with materials, creating new ones, and otherwise finding value in piles and piles of data that we've all been collecting, some of us more than others, for years. Such it is that one of these toys has turned out to be fundamentally useful, and in one short conversation, it became a new, potentially critical part of the Internet Archive's mission. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It, a podcast about technology, history, and getting myself out of debt. Thanks to Daniel Boyd, Jeff Atwood, and the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. The tool has a very simple and very confusing name, Whisper. It is the newest dropped open source package associated with what we call AI, but really is just intense algorithmic analysis of materials and then being able to recognize or recreate them with various random seeds or focused along one particular recognition. Whisper is, at its simplest description, a voice transcription and language translation utility. But besides being open sourced, it's really, really good. Setting aside that advanced technology feels like magic, I would also say that advanced technology, when demonstrated, immediately makes people think there has to be a human on the other end, is another sign that what you've got is at least very interesting and perhaps very special. I became aware of Whisper driving down to go to the Atlantic Conference to talk about AI art in the context of an artist. The pitch that it was really good at translating all sorts of languages and all sorts of audio material made me wonder if it was everything it was cracked up to be. So I started giving volunteers sets of audio on the Internet Archive that I knew would never see translation. Things like news programs and network shows often have some sort of closed captioning or subtitles created for it. But there's entire classes of material that I call unadvocated. They have no supporters who could beg for grants or be able to whip up an army of volunteers to do whatever needs to be done. It's one thing to tell people that this was a one-of-a-kind interview from a person now gone and that it would be really nice to have a transcription of what was said. It's another thing when you're talking about a public access television show with a rambling host made in 2005 and mostly going into the comings and goings of politics at the time. It's especially the same thing when you're talking about very low quality audio that came off of CD-ROMs or only played on a scratchy record 60 years ago. Who's going to take the time out of their life to make a text version of what was being said. What came back from those initial experiments that I was asking for while on the road were pretty eye-opening. Punctuation was correct. Capitalization worked out. When people trailed off their voice, it was reflected in the text transcription. Names were spelled correctly more often than not, and cases where they weren't would have confused a human transcriber as well. It successfully transcribed not just punctuation from English, but the diacritics, the unique punctuation of other languages. It did Japanese, Spanish, Finnish, a whole range of languages, and it could even translate them all self-contained in a data set in an openly accessible Python program. That felt too good to be true. And when I returned home and found the time to start really digging into what this was, I found it fundamentally interesting. I found it fascinating. 
The first thing that I knew was if it worked well enough that a person could get an idea of what was being said, that would be enough for a whole class of materials. If you have a one-hour VHS tape on some obscure instructional subject, be it exercise or, or law enforcement or technical training, nobody but nobody is going to do that without being paid for it, and they're not going to enjoy it when they do. Finding any grant money, any donations to do that sort of work, it wasn't going to happen. I can make the pitch that all of it in a search engine derives value Finding the first time that people use a term or how we referred to different kinds of groups or concepts over time outside of periodicals and newspapers is a really important part of historical research. And a person who's doing that research may or may not have the time to leaf through hours and hours of footage looking for what they want to find. They'll have to rely on the printed word, a sphere different from what we get from records and cassettes and lectures. These different types of materials reflect accurately the world they all shared, but they have different focus. This isn't labor snatched from the hands of individuals who could have earned a living doing it. This is work that could have never been done. So... I started playing with Whisper in all different sorts of realms. Whisper is disturbingly easy to install. You put in Python, put in some required additional modules, download the audio that you want. Whisper will grab something called a training model, which is about a gigabyte in size, and it will start processing using your video card's GPU to go fast. It can go without a GPU, but trust me, you don't want to do this. If you ever remember the years of software rendering versus hardware rendering for video games, it's that all over again. Running off a video card, Whisper begins shooting out transcriptions, both in a format for subtitling as well as text files. And it's almost shocking how it tends to get things right. The capitalization of companies, the spelling of technical terms, it tends to nail it. The first few times you watch it in action, you're almost gasping for breath from holding it, watching how it's deriving what feels like near-perfect transcription over time. Like any perceived magic trick, when it all goes smoothly, you are left wide-eyed, and slack-jawed at what just happened. I tried to throw the worst of the worst at Whisper. Television news programs, with their perfect sound and their enunciating announcers, yeah, okay, good enough. But I wanted to see what it did with interviews conducted on home amateur videotapes in the back of nightclubs and rock shows. I wanted to see what it would do with home movies, with interviews that I had conducted for my documentaries, and running it against scratchier and scratchier 78 RPM records from nearly 100 years ago. And the answer was, when it worked... It was devastatingly accurate. Cases where I would have to go back and listen several times to realize that that is, in fact, what that person shouted over the music during the interview, and that it was accurate, down to the punctuation. Turning around and showing it to friends and colleagues and fans, I got a lot of adherents who also saw the potential in what Whisper could be doing. The realms of material that would have never gotten the ability to be searched, to be collated, to have word clouds made of what was discussed in an hour or four hours of audio. All we saw, all we felt, was the wave of impending potential. Now, let me talk about cold water. There's a researcher named Kalev of a group called G-Delt. He's a researcher and a scientist in the true meaning of the word. And when I stand next to him, 
I realize how slapdash my life is. How much of the time I'll move too fast, too quick, too brimming with excitement to put something out, with rivets still glowing from the foundry because I'm so excited and energized to move ahead at top speed. Kaliv is a smart, smart fellow. He has done analysis on the Internet's TV news archive that has been invaluable in discovering trends, relationships, and processes in how news is formed and used worldwide. He grabs with both hands any potential tool that makes his job easier, and he experiments against it to within an inch of its life. Where I happily threw Whisper into a pile of ephemera and called it a day when it worked pretty well, Kaliv strapped it down and drilled it to bits. Within a few days, results started coming back from his work against dozens of languages, translations, transcriptions, discovering where things worked and where things didn't work. And so, I can say to you, realistically, based on Kaliv's work, that when Whisper, a program that just got released, does things right, it does it scarily right. But when it gets things wrong, it gets them scarily wrong. In the short time I've been paying attention to voice recognition like this, there is a term, hallucination, which is where a translation or transcription program seems to make up out of thin air something it's listening to. This is a case where somebody says the cat is in the box and it comes back with a cat is made of boxes or even it is the dance of the sugar plum fairy and you have no idea why it did this. The methodology by which Whisper AI seems to be creating these transcriptions is breathtaking but also kind of inscrutable to folks like myself. So when it works, it's great. But if what you are transcribing or translating has deep meaning based on the words, say translations of foreign broadcast or transcriptions of speeches or statements that will then be copied verbatim by news organizations or people doing research, well, you are gonna need a disclaimer. In one case, I took a Chinese dub of the anime Doraemon and transcribed it, then translated it to English in Whisper. It kept calling Doraemon Ding Dong. I was really concerned until I found out that, in fact, in China, until very recently, Doraemon was called Ding Dong by that dubbing company. But as for the rest of it, I had no guarantee that it was getting the names, the syllables, the meaning of what was being said accurate at all. This isn't as meaningful if you're using an anime that nobody was going to translate. But it changes a lot if you're talking about press releases being done in a foreign country and this is your only source of knowing what was said. But... I have forged ahead, finding the value of searchable captions at the Internet Archive way too valuable and way too validating of all the video we've collected to stop. For what I am sure will be years to come, captions will be derived from Internet Archive video items, both by work that I'm doing as well as in-house processing that will be added to the servers. In my case, I've been calling them not English, but auto-generated. It's my hope that somebody who looks at this and sees the word auto-generated immediately internalizes that what they're going to get is nice when it works, but not unexpected to need change and refinement. My estimate is that a person who is transcribing and then subtitling a set of material can now do it at a rate of 20 to 1 of what they used to be able to work at. But the resulting work still needs that human touch, that polish of the wood that comes out of the machine that replaced the wood carver. You need humans in the mix. Language is important. It is something that we use to communicate with each other at a very deep level. Technical, emotional, 
even dispassionate, augmenting the work that's needed to do to transcribe audio and video helps us in the aggregate. But the lessons that I've learned with Whisper continue themes I've learned throughout my life. Computers and machines are your friends. But your friends sometimes turn on you. And it's always a good idea to keep an eye on what they've been up to. This is Jason Scott Talks His Way Out of It. Thanks to Mark Pilgrim, em- James Bacoyanu, Emilio Oliveira, Ernie Hershey, Michael Rubin, Craig Talbert, Dileep Reddy, Sean Kelly, Trixie the Cat, John Sturm, Martin, Sembiance, Eugene, and Anonymous, along with the hundreds of other supporters on Patreon and elsewhere who have been supporting me and helping me get out of debt. I would also like to give a special thank you to the collaborators and volunteers who are giving access to their GPUs for this process. They have been going through literally thousands of pieces of video to make them accessible in a first-run experiment on the Internet Archive. Folks are already benefiting heavily from this. All of my documentary footage has received subtitles now, making the interviews easier to search and to read. And a very special shout-out to Ashmitz, who told me that should I ever want to say their name, it's pronounced Ashmitz. (laughs) 